weapon you need. We're not looking for that. Okay, let me be clear. But once that path is chosen, once the war path is there, then it's total victory. It's defeat of the satanic globalist. Alfred? Yeah. I I mean, part of the problem, what Sean needs to do right now, you keep your eyes and ears open. I don't know what the tipping point's going to be, but recognizing we're getting closer to that tipping point, your obligation is to prepare yourself. That's where you are right now. Be prepared. Be prepared. Learn, study, understand the moral foundation for what you're doing. Understand the technical foundation. What do you need for uh, firearms or what do you need in order to litigate? Be prepared. Exactly. We've got a coming. lot of avenues to fight right now. Before you even think about physical action as some some you know solution, it's it's way down the road. Pirate FM, local newsletters, going to city council, speaking out. That those are the things we need to use now. Because believe me, it's easy to talk about violence. It's primitive, it's simple, it's quick. That's not the road to victory. We first have to get our word out and try to avert this peacefully. I agree. That's uh, what, I'm, what I'm after. I just want to think it through so that when the moment happens that I'm, I'm steadfast, I'm ready, not ready to compromise. Because what if they had a false, flare tomorrow, uh, false flag terror tomorrow, and then boom, all of a sudden the town's on lockdown, they're coming around, hey, we need to get your guns because it's dangerous out here. You know, it, that's the kind of stuff I'm worried about. I'm thinking, okay, is this the moment, or do I go ahead and hand this over because maybe this, maybe they'll they'll lift off the ban tomorrow. Well, that's why know? they want a, a registration. You can hand them the junk today and then organize tomorrow. Always pick the time yourself. Never play on their time frame. I appreciate your call, Sean. Okay. Uh, this is the time for choosing. I mean, we are entering this phase. These are people poisoning our water, our food, on record. I've given you all the documents. These are demonic pigs. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's time to reach out to those that serve the system who aren't awake. There's the quote. And how we burn in the camps later thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family. Or of during periods of mass arrest, as the example of Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, people had not simply sat there in their lairs, pawling with terror at every yeah. bang on the downstairs yeah. door yeah. and every step on the staircase, but had understood that they had nothing left to lose. Well, that's me, folks. You better believe it. And had bodily set up in the downstairs hall, as our founders gave us, an ambush of half a dozen people with axes. We got more than that, thanks to George Washington. Hammers, pokers, and whatever else we had at hand. After all, you knew ahead of time that those blue caps were out at night for no good purpose. And you could sure ahead of time that... You'd be cracking the skull of a cutthroat. Or what about the Black Maria sitting out there on the street with one lovely chauffeur, a, a, a commie leader? What if it had been driven off of its tires, spiked? The organs would quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transported, notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst for your blood. The cursed machine would have ground to a halt. Alexander Schultz and Aitzen. Uh We'll go back to more calls and your comment on that. Uh, but this system feeds off your fear. And that's not just a, I've had a judge tell a friend of mine that, a judge told them, look, don't show any fear when you're in that courtroom. They feed off your fear. It's the same thing. What Solzhenitsyn was talking about is everyone was afraid to be the first one to fight. Let somebody else fight for my freedom. I don't want to fight for my freedom. Will somebody else please stand up and fight for my freedom? I'm afraid to fight for my freedom. I want someone else to fight for it. That is the attitude that puts people in camps. Or we have the Alamo where 168 people stood against 4,000 and died, but yes. their sacrifice is known in eternity. Exactly. That's exactly what we're talking about. It's a question of whether you will succumb to fear or you will stand up as an act of faith, an act of courage. And hard to do, easy to say, hard to do, but that's what it comes down to. You know? But then well, even the Japanese come and put plaques at the Alamo. Well, I, know, I don't know anything about Japanese. No, my point is even, even the Japanese people have come and put plaques at the Alamo for their honorable sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what side you're on, the idea you live forever. 
I mean, it's better to die as a patriot on your feet than on your knees sucking the boots of some pot-bellied scumbag. And again, it goes back to his life so dear. I can't remember the entire quote, but is I know... Is peace so something. sweet than yeah, to live yeah. on your knees as slaves? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Is life so dear? No, there's a point in time it gets down to who are you? Who are you? How far are you willing to go just to hang on to your life? There's a point where you got to say, uh-uh, I'm not going any further. My life is not worth. There are things that are more important than my life. And when you get into that, then you become dangerous. You begin to see something more important. Now you're now you're a dangerous man. Right. So you escape that fear of dying, and then. But again, I get back to the fear of not completing my mission. Do I let them take the guns that are in my house so that I can organize against them? Yeah, there it is. Is life so dear? Peace so sweet to be. Purchase at the price of chains or slavery. Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course exactly. others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's, that's Patrick right. Henry right there. That's right. That's right. But, I mean, people thought that's a radical statement. Give me liberty or give me death. That's yeah. the only answer. If you're not willing to die, you don't get liberty. Exactly. And There's always some little from? little creature that wants to steal your liberty. There's always some bossy pot belly that's going to try to overrun you. If you're not ready to fight them, then get ready to bend over. That's exactly right. And where does liberty come from? According to the Declaration of Independence, it's one of the God-given unalienable rights. Liberty flows from God. Freedom flows from man. You free the slaves. A man frees the slaves. God gives liberty. There's some overlap between the two terms. But if you want the real deal, you're, that's the brass ring. You're looking for the liberty that comes from God. And you're saying, look, give me God. If I can't get my God-given rights, get me out of here. I don't want to be here. And that's the deal from my perspective. It's spiritual warfare. It's not just liberty in a political sense or a legal sense. It's spiritual warfare. God gave me that liberty. I want it. Well, folks, if you believe in what we're doing and want to see more of this put out to the four winds of this planet, donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or 888-253-3139. I am dedicated and 100% committed to overrun this enemy and 100% put my body and my intellect against them, and so is my crew. Donate to us so that we can hire more reporters and get better equipment and at least attempt justice be done may the heavens fall duty is ours consequence belongs to god i don't know how this ends but i am committed frail and weak as i am we are kings compared to this scum evil and we must take them on head on infowarsmoneybomb.com or 888-253-3139 if you want to donate right now let's talk to trip in new york and jeff jt Keith, Ben, Ralph, Palmer, Rachel, Don, Donna. Go ahead, Tripp. You're on the air with Alfred and Ask. Hi, Alfred and Alex. Um, I got two quick questions for you. Uh, this would have probably meant more before the supposed Osama bin Laden capture, but wouldn't it have drove Obama's ratings through the roof if, he would have all of a sudden announced what we've all wanted and said <laughs> that he thinks World Trade Center number seven collapsed was suspicious and actually relaunched an, uh, an investigation with real experts. Well, I don't believe Obama's ever going to make that statement, and I doubt if anybody in the White House who wants to keep breathing much longer is going to make that statement either. It's going to take an interesting revolution to get anyone in a significant position of power in government, especially the White House, to admit there's something suspicious. Well, look, I mean, it's come out the government's dealing the drugs and bringing the guns or yeah. you know, the different crime syndicates. They're a group of criminals. We'll never expect the criminals to admit they're a bunch of dirtbags. That just, you know, when that happens, that means the Christ is back amongst us. It'll be one of the signs. When you get a president who admits the crimes that have been committed by our government, that means end times are definitely here. The Christ is, he's either here or he's awful close. Anything else, Tripp? Yeah, well, I guess that takes that as, uh, we'll never hear that. But my second question is, is <clears throat> what is the Vatican thinking, wanting a world bank, isn't it, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it signs of the end of times of a one world government, one world All bank? All of the currency? powerful structures are in the throes of the wicked one. Mm. I mean, uh, Alfred? I agree, but I would say this. Insofar as anyone, including the Vatican, 
is attempting to gra- is attempting to create a new world bank. We've got a lot of trouble happening in this world right now. And again, you look at you look at Greece. They are refusing to pay the debt. Iceland already refused to pay the debt. It's not their debt. It turned out it was all owed by the banks. I understand. It's all a bunch of it's it's paying someone else's debt. There's all sorts of moral questions about it. If the people of the world, the people part of the part of the Occupy Wall Street thing is motivated, at least part of it, by people who, who can't pay their college debts. And there's millions of people who can't pay their mortgages right now. Four million mortgages are 90 days or more uh, behind on their payments. We are in a world right now where the debt can't be paid. And it's becoming increasingly obvious people are getting ready to just quit it. When they quit the debt, when they finally say, screw it, I'm not paying. That's all. I'm not paying. How about that? Huh? The debt-based monetary system will go with those debts. You're not going to just repudiate the national debt. And it's going to come to that, in my opinion. It has to because it's too great to be paid. It's got to be repudiated. It's just a question whether you do it now or you do it five years from now or whenever. But it's got to be repudiated, in my opinion. If it does, you can't repudiate all that debt without also repudiating the debt-based monetary system. And from my perspective, without knowing the details of what's going on with the Vatican and perhaps trying to set up another bank or whatever, I have somebody's got to be looking at a new monetary system that's based on gold or silver. We're not going to, the debt can't be paid. I believe the debt-based monetary system is going down with it. And that means somebody's got to be putting a new banking system together right now in anticipation for this failure. At least that's the way it appears to me. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Trip. Jeff in Houston, you're on the air. Go ahead. Interesting hearing what's happening in your house. We can hear a woman talking to people in the background. God, I love this. I- I love the sounds of domestic noises. Uh, <laughs> JT in you Texas, care? you're on the air. We'll go back to Jeff in a minute. Uh-huh. Go ahead, JT. Yeah, I wanted to get Alfred's take on what the New World Order is doing to our kids. They seem to pay attention to them. Uh, what are these people's end game? End game is to make the Pete make the children accept the fact. I mean, from my perspective, I harp on this business about animals. I've seen it. I understand it pretty well and it's part of it they are working on the kids because they want to condition them you know a lot of people and we've all been conditioned to some degree theory of evolution is one classic example that theory of evolution is pretty much mandated by the government and most people think well that's just scientific and it's you know it's it, it's okay to teach science in the class and the rest of it the, but the fundamental premise of that of evolution is that we are evolved from animals and therefore we are animals it, to my mind, it's not just a coincidence that they want to teach and force people to understand and embrace the theory of evolution. If you're just an animal, it's not going to be remarkable to you to find law that says you're just an animal. It's not a surprise. It's scientifically correct. But people don't understand that under our Declaration of Independence, those we, we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and they only flow to men and women. They don't flow to animals. If you don't get those God-given unalienable rights, you're nobody. Plus, third sentence in the Declaration says that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. They are telling us the purpose of government as envisioned by the founders was to secure to every man, woman, and even unborn child their God-given unalienable rights. Insofar as government can persuade you that you're nothing but an animal, they have no obligation to pers- to recognize or secure your God-given unalienable rights. From my perspective, this is central to the problem. And- JT, does that answer your question? Yes, Alex. <laughs> Anything else? No, thank you. Thank you, JT.